touching on the top prop bets in the NBA today. All right, so looking at the board for today, it is going to be a better board. We have some decent college basketball props that are out there right now that have been out there for quite a while. There was a Steph Curry prop out as well earlier today that they just didn't respond to uh, that fast. It was under 5.5 assists, and that was its favorite at like minus 155, minus 150 on average across the sports books. So it does seem like a day in which we could potentially be getting some really solid prop lines. So <laughs> it's a big 10 game slate as well. So it does seem like one in which we could be re rewarded um, today simply just because of the volume. And we're also going to see more college basketball props be populated throughout the prize picks board as well. So uh, throughout the day, it should be a pretty good board that we're getting. And then obviously Thursday should be pretty solid as well. Uh, but let's get into it. So this is what I mean. Like we are getting three bets right now that are over minus 140 to hit. Those are very good odds. And these have been there for quite a while. So it doesn't seem like dry or prize picks is responding as fast as they should be. And then just looking at it as well, we, we have some interesting lines here. So the sports parts on average are going to be different especially the more that come in. I think we have about five out of the eight pulling into this right now. And so, you know, throughout the day, this will update as well. But we are seeing some difference in lines. So here's a good example. We got one that seems to be a push. Jordan Miller over uh, 6.5 rebounds, about a push. Prize space has it set at six. Okay, so that's going to be a push. We have another one right here that just based on the over and under odds seem like pushes, but we can see the average sportsbook line has it set, you know, 0.8 higher than what prize picks has. So that's kind of going to be the theme, it seems like as well. And then this is a very interesting one as well. Jordan Walker over 13.5 points is, you know, slightly favoring the under there, but prize picks has it set at 12 and a half. Okay, so we have some pretty interesting prop lines just in that uh, regard where there are some discrepancies across the sports books. And then now if we flip it around, we can see here kind of why probably Price Picks has given us 13 and a half points for the over four uh, Hogard because you know the average sports book line has said 12.5, but they are fair in the over, but still that's not a terrible one. And then same thing for this one as well. So just some interesting props there. And so let's just go back to these ones, quickly examine them. So we got Jordan Walker over 3.5 threes. This was the best odds bet that we're getting really on the day as it sits right now. And so the interesting thing about this game is it is projected to be a high scoring game as well. So we have that going for us and so if we just pull up jordan walker's game log we can see he is someone that gets out and chucks the three ball okay and i would say it's probably given the fact that lately he hasn't been as on shooting the basketball that they're kind of favoring the over here uh to me that makes sense and we can see like yes if he's if he's on he is shooting a ton of three balls that's pretty much what it is and if he's not he's still chucking about eight okay so he gives himself a little bit of a feeler there um but definitely just interesting looking at that. So many three ball attempts from Jordan Walker. So given the fact that the last two games he hasn't been over and we can see beyond that just with shooting the basketball a lot, especially from three ball range, it does make sense why the over is being favorited here. And so now here's an interesting one that we have, and this is for Friday. Uh, the thing with the tacos from yesterday is I have about six bets that are still out because they're on college basketball for Thursday and Friday. Uh, so we'll see about those ones. Uh, looking at this, though. We can see Ben a little bit hit or miss here. And he is someone on the season only averages 2.2 rebounds. Oh, sorry. Nope. 3.6 rebounds. So is this a, might be a high scoring game? Okay. Kind of. Kind of a higher scoring game. Obviously more shot attempts equals more uh, potential rebounds. So I guess I can see why they're favoring it personally. It, it obviously doesn't look like a lock, but if we're just focusing on playing the best odd bets, this is one of them. And then the next one that we got is going to be Elijah Martin over 4.5 rebounds. Once again, this is favored at minus 140 across the sports books. Uh, what's interesting is that thus far throughout the tournament, he hasn't gotten the over, which is kind of interesting to me. Now, if we look at it on the season, he does average 5.3. And it's not like the minutes haven't been there. The minutes have been there for him. So it just seems like one of those strange things that's happening right now. And I would assume that's why the over is being favored. Just given the fact that the last two games, he hasn't been over his average. Okay, so they expected to come back to his average. And then to me, this is probably one of my favorite ones. We got Trey Woodbury over 31.5 fantasy points. He plays for Utah Valley University. And if we pull up that game as well, it is going to be a decently high scoring game. So I would say that's why this prop is popping up. Now, how is it popping up? Well, I went ahead and I added kind of another little data point here uh, on the college basketball NHL prop sheet sheet. So what I did is I went and had and did fantasy points. Now, the issue is that we don't have a lot of steals and blocks props so this is purely going off of points rebounds and assists and then also we don't have that many turnovers as well so um you know if there's three turnovers that could really hurt but if there's a block you know that could negate it or steal you know that could negate it so um 
we don't have that being pulled in here, but just want to call this out because basically any time that a player is going to be projected over their fantasy score, just based off of points, rebounds, and assists, that's going to be highly appealing. So yes, you could probably just do points, rebounds, and assists for this prop, but we can see it's pretty appealing here, right? Like he has just been really getting there and some of these aren't even close, but once again, you could just do points, rebounds, and assists, and then you don't have to worry about potential turnovers and whatnot. And if we look at like, he has just been on a tear as well and so as long as the game stays close which it's projected to um you know he's going to get around 36 minutes which obviously is just going to help as well but yeah looking at this like it's probably because of the turnovers that the fantasy score is where it is so you could just do points rebounds and assists if you wanted to instead and here's the points rebounds and assists probably the safer move and then just moving on to nhl props we really aren't getting any favorable ones just yet as it sits so um as it sits right now so probably just not one we're really attacking right now all right so to me this is gonna be one of my favorite props i think on the day is gonna be jaron jackson jr over 26.5 points rebounds and assists now you could just do points and rebounds as well i'd be fine with that and so the reason i think we're getting this number is kind of the ja morant news ja is expected to be back today but at the same time he could be coming off the bench we don't know how many minutes he's gonna play um you know all that stuff so even if ja is there and active like it shouldn't hurt Jaron Jackson Jr. too much because we look at his numbers per 36 with Ja Morant on the court. He still gets about 18.6 points, 8.7 rebounds, and only 0.7 assists. So he's still going off. And obviously, this is going to be a great matchup. To me, this seems like they're just pricing it too low simply because Ja's going to be back. And maybe they think because Ja's going to be back, he's just going to be going out, chucking, you know, shooting, pun intended. Um, uh, it just It seems way too low, though given his recent production for Jaron Jackson Jr. So I find this line for Brooke Lopez here for fantasy score extremely interesting here. Uh, as you guys know, he's been one of the players that we've been targeting a decent amount. Um, it just seems like too low of a number for him. At the same time, this also seems way too low for Brooke Lopez. I know he's going against the Spurs, so they're probably thinking he's going to get a block or, or maybe two. Uh, that's what they're factoring in there. But based off of the prop that they're giving us for fantasy points of 34 fantasy points, they're basically saying he's getting like two and a half blocks and steals with no turnovers, which for what it's worth is what the line is set at uh, for block shots. And so the, the biggest issue with Brooke Lopez is Milwaukee is heavily favored in this game. OK, and it is a decently high scoring game. So what when do I like to do first at bets? It's going to be in situations like this where, you know, if it is going to be that big of a blowout, well, we don't necessarily want to target the full game props because a player like Brooke Lopez could potentially not get his full rotation and then maybe just slightly miss. Now, if they are going off and you know this scores right, that means the players are going to be productive and that's going to be why <laughs> this line's right. And if that's the case, I could see potentially doing the first half over prop, but we can see some people might be worried about the fact that he hasn't gone over that then um, as, as frequently. It does seem like there's a good line here for Brooke. Um, it's really up to you guys what you want to bet on this. And I could see just given the fact that it is a very high scoring game or sorry a very high uh spread bucks are heavily favored to win i could see someone from the bucks sitting and then that would only help the other props that are out there and for what it's worth here we are getting a slight bump down in points rebounds and assists the average line for the full game is set at 25.5 where this is set at 12.5 so if you times that by two it would be 25 so about a half a point there so and then just looking at the best odds bet that we are getting on today's slate for NBA, it is going to be Michael Porter Jr. over 2.53s. This is set at minus 138. We can see slightly projected to get over. And if we look at it, it's because he has been getting out there and shooting a bunch of three balls. Um, you know, not a terrible prop. Just need three to hit. I can see why they're favoring the over. And then just looking at some other props that we have out there, uh, we can see like the good props that we're getting for the over bets. They're all being favored over as well, which is good. We typically, we don't get that. We do see a lot of discrepancies. So it's nice to see that we are having a consistent message across the board. Um, the best one that we're seemingly getting based off of the projection would be uh, Sangoon over 8.5 rebounds projected to get 9.7. And, you know, that's favored at minus 130 to hit. So a pretty good prop that we're getting there. And then the same thing is going to be true for all these under bets as well. For the most part, the edge is very close. So we like to see that. Now let's go ahead and look at some bets where the lines aren't matching up. And here's a very interesting one. Anthony Davis over points. Okay, we can see the average line has set at minus 122 to get over 26 points. So we are getting a half a point here for Anthony Davis to get over, you know, 25.5 prize picks points is what it's set at. Now he's only projected to get 24.95. So the edge isn't great there, but we can see that is going to be a favorable line that we're getting. And then we also could do points, rebounds, and assists. Now, why is the projection slightly lower? Well, because we're not pulling in like the per 36 numbers with LeBron James off the court. Obviously, Anthony Davis gets a higher usage rate and everything with LeBron off the court. 
So to me, this is going to be a favorable bet that we're getting. I'd probably do Anthony Davis over 26 points. And the thing with it is they're not going to be with Anthony Davis, or sorry, the Suns are not going to be with DeAndre Aiden tonight. So that could help as well. Uh, the issue with AD is he's been so hit or miss late, lately, more than we would think. Rebounds have been a little bit lower lately. So you could do points and rebounds if you wanted to. But as it sits right now, over 25 points, 25.5 points seems to be the move. And then here's another one as well where it's basically a push here. We can see that. But it's a push at 29 for points and assists for Zach Levine. Average sports line is at 28.5. So slight edge. Now we flip it over, trying to find some under bets where it's not matching up. There isn't too many. Yeah, nothing too crazy there. And then just taking a look at the fantasy score ones. Uh, this is very interesting for Bam. I should mention that Kevin Love over points was pretty interesting today. Uh, I don't mind that one. Um, Quentin Grimes and KCP are always two players that pop up on this. And we do still see Brooke Lopez is still projected to get over 34 fantasy points. So if you guys like that one, you can definitely roll with it. One argue there. Uh, I do also just want to mention one player as well. To me, this line for Kevin Porter Jr. just seems too low, especially in this matchup against Memphis. I'm assuming this game is going to be high scoring. 231, actually not too much. And Memphis is actually heavily favored. That is strange to me. Did I miss some news for Houston? I don't think so. No, they're healthy. Seems like a strange line. Now they have been getting blown out there's a lack of chemistry just given the fact that Jalen Green Kevin Porter Jr those guys have been out a lot but Kevin Porter Jr is going to get out and shoot the ball a lot we see that you know over 14 shot attempts in the last four games getting a ton of minutes as well 38 40 39 39 like just getting a ton of minutes as well so maybe it's because Jaws expected back if Jod is you know if his minutes are restricted then we have two bets that kind of correlate with the Jaron Jackson Jr. points, rebounds, and assists. And then Kevin Porter Jr. as well. Uh, the game would be a little bit closer if Jaws' minutes are limited. We'll see. But then that would just make this bet a little bit stronger. And you could just do points instead if you wanted to. And so to me, if I had to choose, I'd probably say my favorite ones would be like these two right here. Um, but this, these are going to be the bets of the day. So we got Jordan Walker over 3.5 threes made. I uh, kind of explained that why. Over minus 140 for that one. That's pretty good. Uh, Trey Woodbury, just high scoring game. It's been highly productive recently just seems like a good bet jaron jackson jr as well this is another one of those that just seem like a good bet if jazz minutes are limited at all i like that and this is another one of those in which maybe we do first half like we're doing with brooke because we saw brooks fantasy score points rebounds and assists as a prop that we want to use but that game was you know has the potential to, to be a blowout and so that's why we're going with the first half prop so you could do that with jaron jackson jr as well and then michael porter jr uh the best odds bet that we're getting on the day um for nba minus 138 to get over 2.53s but yeah i would say like one of these three like a combo of these three are my favorite on the day but remember the goal here is to give you guys the information to be able to make a bet slip for your favorite two leg bet on the day thus be able to profit thus be able to control your bank world a little bit better all right that's all for today's video hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did give a like and subscribe let's have a good slate and as always guys let's keep cashing